Okay, why did you plug it in for so long? Plug in the Yeah, why did I plug it in for the sound like this? Plug it in on the phone. Yeah, plug it on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, where you want to plug it in. To the to the same place that you plug in my wire? Yeah, I'll plug the phone. Good morning. Welcome everyone to join together for this Eucharistic Mass. Please join me in the entrance antiphon. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, O God of Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let's take a moment to call to mind our sin. I confess, and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, your Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after. Make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes, for Jew first and then Greek. For in it is revealed the righteousness of God, faith to faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous by faith will live. The wrath of God is indeed being revealed from heaven against every impiety and wickedness of those who suppress the truth by their wickedness. For what can be known about God is evident to them, because God made it evident to them. Ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been able to be understood and perceived in what he has made. As a result, they have no excuse, for although they knew God, they did not accord him glory as God or give him thanks. Instead, they became vain in their reasoning and their senseless minds were darkened. While claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for the likeness of an image of mortal man, or of birds, or of four-legged animals, or of snakes. Therefore, God handed them over to impurity through the lust of their hearts for the mutual degradation of their bodies. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and revered and worshiped the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day pours out the word to day, and night to night imparts knowledge. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. Not a word nor a discourse whose voice is not heard. Through all the earth their voice resounds, and to the ends of the world their message. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, The Word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, O oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools! Did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday we began our continuous readings in the first reading by journeying through the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. And this is truly an invitation for reflection and knowledge because Romans is one of the most theologically robust letters of St. Paul in the New Testament. Today in Romans we hear 
For what can be known about God is evident to them, because God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes of eternal power and divinity have been able to be understood and perceived in what he has made. So this line from St. Paul in the first chapter of Romans is a reminder of the self-evident truths of God, of his natural law, that God has woven into the gift of our creation, the biblical image of the gift of the family and spousal life that he has called us to. Now, of course, in the Old Testament, it was more of a moral code of justice. And St. Paul is beginning his letter to the Romans by reminding the people of all the many just laws of God and that we will be judged by the law of God. And then our gospel this morning, we move from that old covenant of judgment to the new covenant of God's love and mercy. In a sense, kind of dovetailing with what we heard of the parable of the rich young man this past Sunday. The rich young man told Jesus, I have followed the law of Moses. I have kept the precepts of the Torah. Just as we heard in the first reading in Romans, in a sense, living that moral life. The rich young man tells Jesus, I have lived it, every aspect of it. I have kept the law. When Jesus challenged that rich young man in his heart, in his spirit, to go and sell all that he had and to follow Christ. And the rich young man went away sad in his heart, for he had many possessions. Now since the rich young man was able to live out the life, the outward life of following God's commandments, but he had not received the true transformation of heart, but he went away with a listless spirit. That's the same challenge that Jesus gives the, apostles, gives the Pharisees today. As the Pharisee judges Jesus for not following the ceremonial washing of his hands and feet when he came into his home, Jesus judges the Pharisee for just judging based off the ceremonial precepts and the outward practices of the law but not the inward reality of the heart. And so once again, in this gospel and the gospel from this past Sunday, we're reminded that the Lord desires to give us a new heart and a new spirit, that we will not only live our Christian lives by our outward actions, but by our inward love. And our heart and our actions must be united. and must be filled with that same love of God on the inside, and on the outside. And we can reflect on that in the gift of our own piety, in the gift of our own prayer. In a sense, when we attend daily Mass, when we pray our daily Rosary, is it just simply an outward road action, or is it an inward act of love within our hearts? It's by taking time for contemplation and silence and stillness in our prayer lives, by giving a little bit extra time to God that we more deeply encounter God, that we more deeply encounter His love for us, and that truly we can be more Spirit-led. So when we come before the Lord in the gift of our prayer and piety, it can truly come from within, from that seat place of God within us, that truly it may be God within us returning His prayers to His Father. Trusting in God's gentle mercy, we now offer him our prayers and petitions. For the church, may the Lord continue to bless her. We pray to the Lord. For all government officials, may the Lord open their hearts to hear and respond in justice to the cries of those with no voice. We pray to the Lord. 
For all families, may God bless their sacred bonds and strengthen their love for one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, In silence, let us offer our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, open us to your life within us, that we may come to know you more fully, through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, so that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things. We sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, they have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, for the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Of the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy of what you can do. I don't want to say the word of my soul. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seek and destroy souls. Amen. Remember, the most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgins of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother, the word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Those who like to remain will now pray our devotion to Our Lady of Pomsacur. Most holy and immaculate Virgin and our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. Mother of perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Let us stand now to present our petitions and thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God gathered here to honor our mother perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Fob, our priests, and all the leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick, especially. To regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all our deceased, especially. And to the souls of all the faithful departed. Let us pause now and solemnly present our own petitions to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. 
Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Let us pause now to silently thank our Mother Perpetual Help for our own favors received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, that he may defend you, within you, that he may sustain you, before you, that he may lead you, behind you, that he may protect you, above you, that he may bless you, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Receive for us, dear Mother, in obtaining pardon for our sins, love for Jesus, final perseverance, and the grace always to call upon you, Mother, perpetual help. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and committing ourselves to her powerful protection. Hail Mary, Lord of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate, as a mother ready at every moment to help us. Grant, we beg you, that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. This we ask, through you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 